Okay, so Black Dragon expressed interest for seeing my workflow in Premiere. And I may as well start with the sequence. Sequence doesn't matter, but I'm choosing a 1080p 30 just because uh, it's at the top and I'm lazy. And I don't really care about any of this, and I'll show you why in a second. So we're going to name the sequence, I don't know, all right, same thing as the project, A3 Techie. And this is why, uh, what I'm about to show you why I didn't care about the settings is I'm just going to conform the sequence to the raw video that I'm putting in. Now, this isn't normally how people use nonlinear editing systems. They tend to, you know, open the sources up here, you know, do an in or an out, and then pick what they want to actually bring into the timeline or use. But this isn't sort of a typical video project, the things that I do. Um, it's all one take, it's all constant, you know, like I, I can't really choose between, um, you know, one shot of someone saying their line and another shot of someone saying their line. So I'm just completely going to be using the NLE wrong. And uh, so first thing I do is I bring the video, the game audio soundtrack, which is this one, this is the video track and my microphone track, which I record separately. And previously what I would do is I would just edit to this and then edit the audio after my complete edit. But um, now I like hearing myself when I'm editing. So I'll do some uh, very basic sort of effects and audition to start off my edit. So this is gonna take the clip and just the the this audio track right here and just bring it into audition which is uh, adobe another adobe product uh that integrates pretty decently with premiere all of the adobe suite products integrate pretty well it's if you are on creative cloud it's sort of like instead of having one piece of software uh just all of the software work together in some way and that's honestly something that only adobe can do because they have the software suite to do all that but anyway, so now I'm in here in Audition, and you can see that it's rendering the peaks for my audio. I'm just gonna do a very quick sort of effects pass over my microphone track, which will raise the audio, clarity, do some noise gating so that like keyboard clacks and other random noises don't come through. And uh, it will also do some sound cancellation. So for example, if you see here all this fuzziness, Let's just play that. Well, can't really hear it because it's down so low, but all that fuzziness is background noise that will be um, increased also if I were just to crank the volume. So I'll just use a preset because I've been playing around with these things for a while and I'll walk you through which one I use or which ones I use and why. So I first do a, a pass with compression just to raise the audio envelope and then I equalize my voice. Um, now, whatever you do, do not copy these settings exactly. Just sort of understand the intent of what I'm doing and why. Um, so like, don't put anything here at that kilohertz or hertz at that dB or any of that. That doesn't matter. Your microphone setup will require, and your voice too, will require a different sort of EQ than mine. Mine is very specific to my microphone and my voice. So the first thing you'll note here is that all of this range, completely gone. This is the low end, this is the bass. What I'm doing here is I'm using uh, uh, the equalizer to completely kill a whole bunch of the bass in my voice. I'm doing this in part because my microphone is not a voiceover microphone really it's a broadcast microphone so it's fairly bass heavy and you know every every sort of um microphone has a different sort of attenuation pattern i don't even know if that's the right word but will be every microphone will be sensitive in certain frequencies and dull and others so first thing i'm doing here is i'm killing a lot of the bass in my voice and then giving a bump to a frequency where it sort of fills it back in when I listen back. Then nothing for this whole range. And then this is, you'll see these two dips here. These are for clarity. This, uh, you'll, you'll notice that the, the lines here 
aren't proportional, you know? So this is bigger than that and then small again and then da 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 da, da. What this has done for is that these are the areas of the human voice, uh, the frequencies that human voices are most, how do I say it, uh, spoken most, most, they use these areas, which you'll see down here, like these, these sort of bright areas. This is the human voice. When this is all the background noise and bangs on the keyboard and hums and everything like that. So I'm taking all the, the bass off, bumping the bass up at this frequency, which is where I found that my voice's lower end is. Then coming across here, I'm cutting into certain frequencies just to give the sound a sort of clarity. Um, and this is all from just playing around. These are the two points where I've cut in and I've heard an increase in clarity. And then I'm bumping up here on the high end again to sort of um, pull my voice out from all the bass tones in the, in, in the game audio that this will be playing over at the exact same time. Um, and then tapering off again, doing a, a high pass or a low pass or whatever the hell pass, high pass, low pass. So I'm doing the high pass here. And then once this effect runs, the only part of this, all this frequency back here that will go through will be parts that were in these frequency ranges. So everything will be killed over here. And this is the baseline zero right here. So um, there'll be a slight bass increase at the, the, the 120 hertz and then a, a, a large increase on the high end in like the 15,000. So now a de -esser. Human voices recorded in microphones have a tendency to have two issues, plosives and S's. S's is sibilance, s -s -s -s. it's that sound like a snake, and plosives are any sort of B, P, uh, V kinda, just sounds that would explode, you know, plow, explode a lot of air out of your mouth, and it, like, uh, hit the microphone with a lot of just power quickly. So this one's a de -esser. and what it's doing is, it's finding a part in my voice where the frequency where my S's lie naturally and it's killing them. So it's removing the sibilance from my voice. That's the logic behind that piece. And then you'll see here that I'm using a hard limiter. What the hard limiter is doing is it's saying no sound will be uh, louder than negative four decibels here. And then it will increase the noise floor uh, plus eight decibels on everything. So you can think of it as sort of normalizing or um, squishing the audio down to be sort of all the same volume. And then you'll see that I do another compressor here. Now, the reason that I have two compressors is mostly because if you bump this ratio too high, and honestly, that's probably a little too high, um, just all of a sudden voice, just compression in general, it just sounds very... Um, very artificial, like a sort of, like a low bit rate encoding. Then I go into dynamics processing after compressing, and, or excuse me, no, I, I do a quick adaptive noise reduction pass. So this is an automatic noise reducer. Um, this isn't really the best way to do it, to remove hums and hisses from the background, but it is the simplest, because um, it just runs across the whole clip doing it automatically. How you would properly do this is you would take an area, go effects, uh, noise reduction, restoration, capture the noise print for the area, and then effects, process. And then just play with this, play it back, um, until you find a place where it doesn't sound too hissy, but not with so much noise reduced or taken out of it that it sounds again very compressed and like a low bitrate uh, MP3 recording or something. So instead of doing that, I just do the adaptive one because this is a long quick uh, clip and it's always changing and it's something I can just quickly throw in a preset. While this process right here 
is more for individual clips. Sure, I could do the whole thing, you know, like this, capture the noise print, but it's worth noting that this recording is just so long that, you know, like maybe right here, like the, the refrigerator turned on and just all of a sudden this part of the clip will be louder. And then over here, maybe someone's talking in the distance or a bird is making noises. Um, and that won't be uh, removed from the track because it is only focused on removing the sounds that were recorded in this first instance right at the beginning, this sort of hum in the background. So if that hum changes here, it, it will still keep some of that. So anyways, for a multitude of reasons, mostly the reason is just so I can just throw it in a preset. I've opted for the, the, the cheaper knockoff version. Then I do a dynamics processing, and what this is doing is it's um, automatically lowering my audio whenever it's quiet. So what this would be helpful for is say someone is talking in the background or there's a bird making a noise or something, but I'm not talking at the same time. So it's at a lower level that it's recorded. It will just automatically mute that part. So if you look here on this lower part, any, any bit that comes in after all this compression and raising the noise floor, that is say negative 80 decibels, um, it will be automatically lowered another 100 decibels. 70, another 100. 60, it'll be lowered another 95. And the logic behind this is, at this point, after my previous compression and hard limitation, there, my voice should not be in this area at all. It, it's, it's all around here. In, in between this three and the two, sometimes going up to the one if I'm yelling. But my, my normal voice, even a whisper, is loud enough that it will be caught up here and anything below it, keyboard clacks, um, people in the background, noises in the background, a plane flying by, should just be cut off completely and just muted. So after that, I do another round of hard limiting. You know, I, I lower the, the maximum one and I raise the base one. Then, you know, I lower the maximum uh, 0 0.1 and raise the base one again. And that's just so it doesn't clip. Like I want it just below the clip. And then I do another compression. And finally, a final hard limit to normalize it at negative three decibels. So my voice will never be higher than this. It will never be in this area. And it boosts the noise floor again, two decibels. So say, my, my whispering is at 18 then, then it goes to 16, so it's a little louder. Now, to give you an example of what this will sound like, I'm gonna just find a part where I speak and then play that. There, there's no contact yet, no, no reason to get evasive. Now, that, that bird noise right here, I'll have to take that out later if I can. You can see it appear here, there, there. I probably won't be able to remove it, but see, while this one will actually be in the recording because of my dynamics processing, this one won't, or it might. Actually, this bird's kind of loud, but um, generally, stuff like this would be removed automatically. So now I'm gonna apply my, my preset here, and uh, I'll see you in a minute or so. Okay, so now we're back, and we can see that a lot of the background noise has been removed, not completely. You still get a little purple here, but you can see the dynamics processing at work here where it's cutting things out, more or less. These, uh, these little purple bits that are still there were the bits in the dynamics processing that were, here it is, that were on this slide down. So they're still there. They're not turned down all the way, but you know. There is some clicking and whatnot, it sounds like, in the background. There, there's no contact yet, no, no reason to get evasive. But you won't notice that in uh, 
the final edit because it's going to be overlaid on top of another soundtrack. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, you know, if this were like something like a like a high paying gig or something like you would probably want to go through it better and use fewer automated systems and blah 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 but this is just you know a youtube video all right come drive the car up to here i want to park it behind this rock fortunately joey that bird that one um was quite talkative so anyways we're done um with audition for now and I'm going to save it and simply go back to Premiere once it finishes. And it might take a second, but it should show up here, the changes automatically. Um, putting me on the spot. I think if I minimize it or something, it'll do it automatically. There we go. So now you can see the, the new waveforms coming in. These little bits here, you probably won't hear them, but before I'm done, I'll edit them out. And now I'm gonna actually begin editing the, the, the piece. Um, now, one thing to mention again, like in a normal project, you may use the, the, the source monitor here, but as this is just one constant cut, like one scene, one take, one everything. I'm just gonna be doing it all on the timeline, which is a little weird, but it, it works fine. Um, another reason I can't use the source monitor is because I have multiple soundtracks here that I need to keep synchronized. Sure, I could, in recording, just move all these into the same one or mix a new one where these are, you know, in, in audition where these are the same track or whatever, but that's just wrong and bad and destructive, and I don't want to do that. Um, the source monitor and Premiere in general can only use, like, it only allows one soundtrack per video clip. And since I need to keep these synchronized, like, why do this, considering I'm running against the limitations? So anyways, I'm going to start editing and, you know, come back now and again to maybe say something about what I'm doing. All squads, make sure you're checking the FTMF kit loadout for the enemy to identify their uniform. So while I'm editing, right at this intersection. While I'm editing, I'll typically just rewatch the entire thing, you know, and just do slices whenever I start feeling bored, and then pick it up again when I start, you know, experiencing something that I feel is interesting, and I'll, I'll just run with that process. I'll, I'll. Go forward, cut, 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 and then delete all the stuff I don't want, bring it all down, you know, maybe it'll be like 25 minutes now, and I'll just do the thing again. Maybe it'll be 20 minutes, then I'll just do the thing again, it might be 18 or something. But, uh, yeah. So, that's uh, my first cut, right there. First seven minutes of this video, completely boring. Don't care. Not, not gonna make it. Editing room floor. Okay, so I think I've done a fairly basic edit now. As you can see, there's still these big, chunky bits, especially this last part. I haven't even looked at this yet, but I know I'm gonna be doing a lot more finessing sort of here. So this is sort of my first draft. And what I'm gonna do now is just condense all the footage into one nice, big, chunky block and go through the whole entire thing again, sort of like a second cut. All right, there we go. So right now I have a ratio of about one to two or two to one or whatever. Started at uh, 55 minutes long, an hour long. It's now a little less than 30. Go through it again, we'll probably come out to maybe 25. You know, uh, that sounds like a good second cut. And then maybe I'll do a third one that will bring it down to like 23 or something. But uh, here we go again. So here, I like Soylent saying, so we just wasted 100 bullets, but I don't wanna you know, include these five seconds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna delete the video. I'm gonna delete my microphone. I'm gonna unlink this, stretch that video out. Remove that. 
reduce, reduce, and use my two effects. I or transitions. I use these habitually. Constant power for audio, cross dissolve for video, but I never use cross dissolve. It, it's just there because if I were to use a video transition, it would probably be cross dissolve. So I'm gonna put this in, mute my microphone track and just listen to it, make sure it sounds good. So we just wasted 100 bullets. Liked it, but it needed some slug at the end. It just didn't flow right to me. Like the, the sort of breath before cutting to the next bit. It's 100 bullets. All right, I like that much better. So I'm gonna give it a better listen now. Anybody uh, got an airstrike handy? So we just wasted 100 bullets. All right, and now I'm gonna listen with my microphone unmuted. <laughs> like they're not moving. Command uh, not doing got anything. An like they handy. must not be able to hear any cracks or fucking all. So we just wasted 100 bullets. Okay, I don't like that actually now, because he's just speaking too quick. It's like unnaturally quick. So I'm going to do it again. Hear any cracks or fucking all? So we just wasted. Okay, that one doesn't work because you can just hear right here that he's starting to laugh. So, so that doesn't work. But I think the laugh is on this clip, so we could just smidge the transition over like I did there. Okay, I need to make it shorter because now it's starting to break into this part. So we just wasted 100 bullets. All right, that's good. That sounds great. So I'm gonna unmute and give it a good listen again. <laughs> like they're not moving. Command Anybody, uh, not got an like, They handy. must not be able to hear any cracks or fucking all. So we just wasted 100 bullets. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, I don't know. All right. So this one, I like the pacing. The other one. Ran. Sorry, I shouldn't speak while scrubbing over my own voice, or it's confusing. But here, give this a listen. And the other one ran down. All right, the whole second squad's moving. So down. I like the sort of pacing right there, the, the pause before I speak again, but I don't like the cut of the video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to roll edit the video. And what this is doing is it's not, it's not changing anything on either side of this clip. It's just changing the timing of the transition, or excuse me, the cut. So I'm gonna give this a few watches and just, Find one that I feel flows nicely. Okay, so I like the timing there, but I don't like this wiggle here. So how should I fix that? So there's at least two. So what I'm gonna do here is you'll you'll see it betrayed by down here in the bottom left. It's saying that I'm speaking, but that's so like inattrusive and out of there that you won't really notice it if you're not paying attention, which if you're probably paying attention, you're probably watching this area and not the bottom left. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a cut here, do a ripple trim. Ripple, what it does is it, it trims the clip and then just everything is sort of, it, you know, follows that, it ripples. The, 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 the time code change here ripples to here, to here, to here, to here, to every single other clip in the timeline, in the sequence. Um, so now I'm gonna give that another watch. 11, 12. So there's at least- So I like that pause, that pause between these two um, microphone soundtracks. And that noise is a, is, a, is a bell that I keep to keep me focused. So- 12. So there's at least two-, two so there's I like the pause between these two now. But this jump so there so looks pretty awkward. What I'm gonna do is pull that out. And hopefully it will fix over here and no one will notice this slight desync in the bottom left of when I am or am not speaking, which honestly I could fix by not showing it on screen, but kind of like seeing it and it, it brings up questions like, oh, why are you guys using Global Vaughn or whatever? and Acre at the same time. We're not, it's just the key binding. It shows up on screen if I'm doing it, but yeah. 12. 
So there's at least two squads there. I think that's their entire force. One is still up, and the other one ran down. All right, the whole... All right, the whole... Okay, I'm liking that a lot, except now this is distracting me down here. Now, this is going to be a really dumb and easy way of fixing it. Um, and I'm probably only noticing it because I'm the one that pointed it out to myself and then to you. But I'm going to take a screenshot and do it in the most backwards way as possible. I'm going to open Photoshop. All right, so now I've opened the screenshot in Photoshop, and I'm just going to go down here and make a new layer, put a black box over it, paste it. Oops, I just deleted it. Paste it, turn off this one, file, save for web, ping with transparency, translucency, and... I'm gonna take it then from Photoshop and bring it into the project. And now that it's in the project, I'm just gonna put it over. So as you can see here, it's gone now. It's no longer in the corner. This way, if someone is paying attention, or if I'm rewatching it, um, they or me won't be bugged by seeing the uh, desynchronization in my own speaking and the microphone. In Arma 2, I can't really do that fix uh, because it's in the center of the screen. But, uh, and honestly, I probably wouldn't do this fix if I wasn't in binoculars. Um, but this, this is just me making more work for myself because I like seeing that I'm speaking on screen for some reason because I'm weird and narcissistic. So there's at least two squads there. I think that's their entire force. One is still up, and the other one ran down. All right, the whole... And just right here, you can see that for one more frame, in this video track, not this one, is the same thing, and that kind of annoyed me. It's just popping up out of nowhere. So just fix it by moving it over one more frame. All right, the whole second squad... There we go. So this one's the same as the last one. Uh, this layer, I don't want to just, you know, cut to a single video for a few seconds and then cut again to another one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat it. No one will know except now I'm telling you the secret is to make it seem just a little quicker and nicer on the eyes. I am going to push the two clips into one, sort of, and this transition is going to be awkward. I'll let you listen to it and you'll see why instantly. Night. So if you heard that, Soylent to my left said night and it just sort of kept getting louder. So what I need to do is try to cut him speaking out as much as possible. Looks like they Okay, that's good, but it doesn't sound like a radio squeak, squeal, squawk, whatever the hell it is. I've heard it so many times, and that did not sound right. Looks like that sounded a little better, but still not right. Looks like that sounds pretty good, but let's see if we can move it a little further. Looks okay, I heard just the slight, slightest amount of soylent there. So, um, that controls. Now, see, if I do it here, it's doing um, one frame on either side, but I don't want that. I just, I don't want to go down to a two frame transition. I want a three one. So I clicked on the transition. I'm going into the duration and I'm just changing it to three. Now it should sound pretty good. Looks like they've got That sounds great. So <clears throat> I was about to do this without speaking, but I'll go through it. Um, I'll, I'll just play this first and I'll tell you why I don't like this transition. Hill. So, there, there's sort of like a, an echo of a gunshot that plays right about here. I'll, I'll play it again and maybe you can hear it. There's sort of like a, just a rising shh sound. So, what's happening is right around this frame here, there's a gunshot, but it's so inaudible 
that you don't hear it. And then as the volume increases in this um, track, um, you start hearing the reverberation of the shot, but not the shot itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move the constant power over further to try to catch some of that um, gunshot in there. Okay, so I got that, but there was, you know, previous gunshots too, and it sounds even worse now. So I'm gonna keep pulling it out. Hopefully this one works. It works, but I don't like it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unlink these layers, keep that radio squawk, pull it in, and I'm gonna to try to hide the gunshot that is right at the edge of this frame here inside of the radio uh, squawk noise. It sounds pretty good. I'm happy with that. But watching it fully now, I'm not quite happy anymore. Because it's like two or three bullets ring out of an RPK somewhere or an AK and then just silence. So what I'm going to do instead now is loop some audio. So I'm going to take this, put it there, and then just drag this out again and put a constant power on that transition so that it doesn't sound like there's a jump in the audio and do a little tiny one here as well. Okay, that sounds better. You can hear that if you're paying attention that there's a specific gun that rings out twice. Uh, it happens during the transition, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maybe pull it this way a little. That sounds pretty innocent, but I'm gonna keep playing with it. Okay, that sounds good right there. So I'm gonna take this constant power, and because there isn't much of a jump there already, I'm just gonna have like a nice two frame one maybe. Yeah, that sounds good. No one will know except, you know, if you've seen this. So right here, I don't like how I pan a little bit right before cutting to in the new frame. It just seems a little busy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out. There, now it's gone completely. And you're probably wondering, like, why I went from looking over here to showing this one again to going to this. The reason is I wanted to show the tracers and add a little breathing room to the cut so that it wasn't like, you know, talking and then, excuse me, talking and then instantly doing something. So right here, you can have an example of why I do my audio editing. You'll hear an AK firing full auto and then suddenly it's gone. You hear that? You can even see it represented in the waveform here. This noise here is just louder and then it drops and gets quiet here. So I'm gonna do a full constant power on this. What I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm stretching the, the, the firing of the AK out till hopefully the person stops. No, it doesn't sound like they did though. So they kept um, shooting. That sounds good. So they're firing, 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 stop, fire, stop. And by the time they stop, it's about right here. And it's, it's, you won't have to worry about the reverb, uh, like just cutting off either because we, we've already faded. We've already transitioned into this other soundtrack here. Now, this one, I don't know. I'm not liking how it's jumping. If you're paying attention, the rock is first here, and then it jumps to here. I like the tracers. I like the saw shooting the tracers in, and then the RPK shooting the tracers out. But I'm left here with a, a jump, and I don't like the jump. Sometimes I keep jumps in, but I can't make them work, because again, this is all one take, one shot. There's no redos. There's no 
recording individual characters' microphones and then mixing it all together. It's very, you know, one pump. You know, like, you can't... You don't get multiple chances here. So I think what I'm going to do... So I'm going to actually cut this clip here. And if you see, it jumps, but you're not distracted by um, by the rock moving just a few inches on screen. Um, the only thing that can really stick out is these two trees here, which look similar to these two trees being represented on the edge of the frame. So you're going to get a, a jump of these trees moving to over here. But I think that's fairly subtle because there's so many trees that most people won't notice it. Alright, so since this clip is so tiny though now, I'm going to completely redo this transition. I'm going to unlink that audio, unlink this audio, stretch it out until the RPK is no longer firing. And then the RPK starts firing over here again. So maybe I can just make it work. Mm. I'm not quite liking it. Definitely not liking that. So pull it back a little. That sounds pretty good to me. Um, I don't know how I will improve this. Um, I could just remove this shot whatsoever, but again, I like that breathing room. And um, if I did that, I, I may have issues of the RPK that's in this soundtrack overlapping with the RPK that's in this soundtrack. So instead, what I've got is RPK going full auto, pause, single bullet, then this RPK going full auto again. So it sounds like it could possibly be two different guns or even the same gun, but it, it doesn't sound like there's two RPKs firing at the same time, which sounds really suspect. Okay, so watching it again, again, I like that breathing room, but I'm just not liking the quickness of the, the cut on the video track now. So I'm gonna look into... Okay, so that looks like it's interesting. We're getting the tracers just hitting on the dirt there. And, uh, but then we're bringing back that transition, huh? Or the pan, I meant the pan. We're bringing back the pan. So maybe we do get rid of that after all. And we try to stretch this out. How far can we stay on the map? Staying on the map is like a really pro way. Using the map to cut, is excellent. Like, you you have a big thing come on screen and then go away. You can kind of use that to teleport a little. If you do it too much, it, it becomes a little weird, but again, it's all one-take stuff. You can't do redos. You can't tell everyone, hey, all 80 of you or however many, hey, let, let's uh, let's start from one. Let's, let's run that one again. I'm not really feeling the, the camera work on this one. So you, you just got to kind of run with the sort of amateurness sometimes. Okay, so there was a quick flash there. That's like the biggest mistake. It's right here. It's one single frame. That that would be so annoying. Um, so you just gotta watch out for that stuff, especially since um, the the preview up here doesn't always run in full um, quality, and that that's mostly a me thing because of the codec I use and the resolution of it. So this video is coming in at a, or excuse me, it's playing back at a data speed that the hard drive it's reading from can't keep up with. So it's dropping some frames now and then to, to keep with it. And uh, w if I were just to hit play right now. You can see right here, I'm going down into like, I'm going down into like eight frames a second. And honestly, that's fine. But uh, what I like doing before I'm done completely is just look at all the transitions. 
give it time to buffer, you know, just watch the transition and make sure there's nothing there. Now, I noticed right here, you see how the bug stopped in the air? That's in the source video. That's something I can't quite, you know, that, that's not the hard drive speed. That is Arma 3 froze for a split second right there. So this transition, what started as something I think maybe would be five, 10 seconds, is now something that's gonna take me a few minutes just because that is annoying me, how it, how it froze there. So I'm gonna find the frame that it unfreezes at. I'm gonna cut. I know that this is sort of the limit. Like, I can't go any further uh, left than this. I can't start playing this clip any sooner or the B will be frozen in the middle of the screen. So if you remember though, I can't go any further right with this. I can't stretch this clip out any further because I'm in my binoculars. Now, I have a feeling this isn't gonna look good. Okay, so actually that, that maybe works, that you can sort of think that maybe I, I right-clicked to look through my binoculars right there. But I don't like it, it's too quick. So, like I said, it, I don't think it's gonna work. But then it started working, so whatever. But I don't like it. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna hope and pray that on this side of the clip, I have a little more room on the map. I do, okay. That looks good. Now, the thing to wonder though, is all this dead space here. Do I need that space? Do I need that breathing room? Let's rewatch it and find out. Okay, so right here, I need to realign the, the microphone track. I, th th I was pounding on my keyboard so it came through and I actually kind of liked how it sound. So I'm gonna, where does the letter start? First letter there, pull all this in. I'm just gonna match up the microphone, uh, the, the, the keyboard clacks with the typing. All right, so that's good. Um, but uh, I got distracted. I wanna know if this breathing room is necessary. Okay, some of it is definitely not necessary. I'm feeling about this much of it is not necessary. So let's watch it again. A thing to note is I have to pay attention to this transition again, because I just moved the sound effect that was here, the soundtrack, over this way. Okay, so I don't like that at all. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, take this out completely, and just stretch this one out. Give it a listen now. All right, that sounds good. Focusing on this though, I don't know if my uh, my keyboard clacks are synchronized. They're not. That's close enough. Now, no one really edits audio in a video editor. The reason is that is this all has snap to grid, and I can certainly turn snap to grid off right here, and I could move it around, but you're sort of limited um, by the, the, the program. If you look at the little ruler up here at the top, this is one frame, two frame, three frame, four frame. While in an audio editor, you have the ability to go down to absolute milliseconds and quite a bit of fluidity. So most people do their sort of high tech, you know, scalpel sort of editing in uh, an actual editing program. Which, fun fact, just a, just a, actually I'll give you two trivias. Audition used to be called Cool Edit Pro, which is a hilarious name, or Super Cool Edit Pro. I think it was called Cool Edit or something like that. 
and Vegas, the the video editor that everyone kind of knows and uses as like an entry level thing above like Windows Media Player or whatever, Vegas actually started as an audio editor. All right, so right here is a joke that I like. Rocket was just launched. I wonder if it's at us. Oh, nope. Oh, is that the town? So that's the setup, and here's the punchline. That was a that was a very cavalier way to wonder if a missile is heading our way. So, I'm gonna do the same thing that I've shown you before. I'm going to take it in and put it into this clip because it, it looks pretty hokey. Just jump into a a different clip completely. I mean, I do it sometimes, but it looks pretty hokey to to jump for a single one line and then jump to another clip. Rocket was just launched. I wonder if it's at us. Oh, nope. Oh, is that the town? That was a, that was a very cavalier way to wonder if a missile is heading our way. So that, that sounds good. I like this sort of pause here. It gives them time to think of the punchline. Town. The town. That was a that was a very cavalier way to wonder if a missile is heading our way. I it just needs some breathing room on this side. Now this part here is nonsense right now. Who's Alpha? You know, I'll I'll let you listen to it. Command Alpha is about sixty percent effective. Who's Alpha? That's Alpha. But the reason I'm putting it there is to not so much highlight that Alpha is 60% effective, it's to instead foreshadow this shot and some further ones right here where Alpha is falling back because they're starting to lose their effectiveness and they're just gonna get wiped out if they stay there. Now, right here, I'm trying to bring it in close. All right? I try to retain some of that breathing room but bring it in close so that it's not too much breathing room. The problem is, is that my mouse moves here. So what I'm gonna try to do is bring it in real close. I'm gonna bring it in so close that the audio squelch for the, the microphone will actually be in the different track. And maybe it'll sound bad, but well, you know, we're editing, we're curating sort of an experience here. If we don't like it, we can change it. It's not live. Command Alpha is about sixty percent effective. Okay, I just I don't like that at all whatsoever. So, what I'm gonna maybe do is remove this video and stretch in this. Command Alpha is about sixty percent effective. It looks like people in the first cache might be falling back. Okay, I'm starting to like that. I just don't like. The being beginning here now. Command Alpha. Okay, I'm liking that. Just needs a little breathing room here. Oops. Trim out. So I like what I'm doing here with my mouse. Yeah, we're that. I'm circling areas while I'm speaking, but it's tied to the soundtrack here. So again, I'm gonna desynchronize the video and sound to tr sort of make it so I'm not speaking over this person, but uh, we're both completely intelligible. So that doesn't look like it will be completely possible, but what I can do here just change the speed, make it, oh, whoops, I don't know how to math. Make it slow down, right? But I need to unlink the audio because now the audio is slowed down too. Speed duration on the audio, keep that 100%. Pull it out. And then sort of try to resynchronize it with my mouse movements. All right, so I just did that, and I, I'm kind of liking the results. I'll play it back now. 
back. Command Alpha, the idea here is for you to fall back in the Sector 2 while Bravo moves back to their fall point, back point to the east of that location. Yep, we're having trouble doing that, apparently. I think the first attack team is going to take hold of Sector 1, and then the squad on Bad Hill is going to run across and try to capture 2. I think that's how they're going to play it. So again here, this very next shot, we're, we're having the issue now where there's too much dead air here. So we're going to do the same thing that we've done so many times before. It really tightens my things up. So what I'm going to do is just lie and say that, hey, it actually happened like this. All right, now to play this, uh, these three shots back in a way that I'm happy with them. Apparently. I think the first attack team is going to take hold of Sector 1, and then the squad on Bad Hill is going to run across and try to capture 2. I think that's how they're going to play it. Command this, Bravo. Okay, Bravo. They're pretty well stalled. They are not moving at all. They as in the enemy? Correct. Actually, I lied. I'm not quite happy with this transition, but you can see what I've done and what I'm working on right now. So if you notice right now, I am not editing my timeline. I'm in the source monitor. What could I be doing? Well, I have a cut that I don't like. And if you see, like right here, I drag the, the audio and the video. If I drag this one, I just get the audio. And this one, the little film strip there, I just get the video. So look at this cut here. Uh, let me do that. Towards sector two before we open up. I don't like that jump, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to disguise it with the map. We're going to wait until they move out of sector. Right here seems good to start. They move out of sector one and move towards sector two before we open up. Sounds right, And then I'm going to close it there. So let's watch this. Move. We're going to wait until they move out of sector one and move towards sector two before we open up. Sounds good to me. MMG, I got a. Okay, so I want to move this over a little bit more actually. Wait until they move out of sector one. And so it opens. Maybe when he says Sector 1, or just before it. Out of Sector 1 and move towards Sector 2. Sounds okay, good. I like this. We're going to wait until they move out of Sector 1 and move towards Sector 2 before we open up. Sounds good to me. MMG, I got a two-man team coming on your left flank there to give you guys some support. I just like the sort of feeling of that. Now, it's possible that I'm going to change it. I mean, again, I'm only on my second draft, but for right now, that's good for my second draft. It might be final, it might not be. We'll just see in time, really. Tech really needs a medic. We're bleeding out and dying now. Now, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buffer a little bit on these transitions so you can see it uh, a little better, just the cuts that I'm doing here. All right, so that's cut one, and this is cut two. Tech really needs a medic. So again, Tech really needs a medic. Tech really needs a medic. We're bleeding out and dying. Now I'm not really a fan of it. Um, I'm not really a fan of it because. Right here, one frame more, Arma 3 locked up for me and froze for about, I don't know, five frames, six frames, uh, a distracting number of frames. So I just cut ahead, and then I was focusing on these binoculars that I dropped, but it turns out the uh, Soylent already had binoculars, so he didn't need them, so he didn't pick them up. Um, but anyway, I didn't pick them up, and now I'm focusing on them, because like, oh yeah, I can pick them up again. And... 
Uh, the thing is though, the truck's zooming off, so I go to look at it to make sure it goes away, or it gets away fine so it doesn't get destroyed, and then I pick up the binoculars and report it on the radio that I've been injured. Sure, I can just keep this, uh, the, the, I think this whole thing played out in like 10 seconds or something. I should, I could just keep all that in, but I don't, I don't like how it flows like that. It seems like it, 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 it sort of languishes on a little too long. It's a little too slow. And I, I think you should really sort of, if you feel bored watching it, you need to cut it out because like there, there's an element of maybe narcissism or something in there that you will enjoy, you know, the smell of your own farts, you know, like you can make something that's absolutely terrible, but you'll like it just because it's yours. So if you feel a little bit of boredom in watching your own things, like speed it up because there's going to be people that don't have that sort of psychological attachment to what you recorded that you did. So if you speed it up to a speed that, and, and you can be very brutal with what is or isn't boring, and that's probably good if you are, but if you speed it up to a way or to a speed that you aren't bored with it, probably most people, especially people without, again, a sort of um, an attachment with it or a knowledge, a foreknowledge of what's going to appear in the next five seconds, that they'll sit there and, and watch it longer. Like, how, how many times have you watched a video and you go to fast forward it and then you find out that you fast forwarded too far and if you would have just kept playing it for another two seconds, you know, something more interesting would have happened. You, you want to keep that from happening mainly. You want to constantly be engaging the person, like uh, the person that's watching this. So for example, my second draft, I've already cut down three and a half minutes, but originally this was 55 minutes long. Now, not every second of those 55 minutes is interesting. They're, they're certainly not memorable. So what you should be doing here, if you're doing like a sort of diary entry video, which I kind of classify these as sort of like memories or diaries of a certain play session. Um, like if there's something that's not memorable, remove it from the memory. Like you don't need it in here if it's not memorable. Now I know a lot of people don't have time to edit or they don't enjoy editing and they sort of just upload, you know, semi raw footage or completely raw footage. and you know, that's fine. If people want to watch that again, that's fine. But it's just not for me. Like, to be honest, I don't even watch a lot of gameplay videos just because I don't have the time to watch gameplay videos, which I think is like horribly sort of ironic because I make gameplay videos. But I, I, I just think that if you are making uh, space in your life, you know, some time in your day to sort of go through and curate an experience for someone, you should sort of curate the best experience you can, the, the tightest, most compact, most, I wouldn't say most digestible, but most engaging, most engaging sort of experience. So if for you and your abilities, that is mostly unedited, just look at this cool thing that happened, that's great, but you have to keep in mind that my videos are fairly long. Like, look at this, I'm already to over 25 minutes. The vast majority of people who watch YouTube videos, um, you know, only watch it for like a music video's length, you know, two to three minutes. So, uh, I, I, mean, and I think if you would go and look into your analytics, I never actually go and look in my analytics because I don't give a shit. But if you go and look, I think most people only watch it for a minute or something like that. But uh, there, there's sort of an issue there and how accurate those analytics would possibly be because I'm sure many people would click on the video just to look at the comments after already having seen once and that sort of then divides the amount of time that they watched it. But in any case, like, just try to make something that isn't a feature length film, in my opinion. Like, I just, it's way too long. And I know I've made some long videos, but like, if I see a long video in my sub box, I'm probably not gonna click it. Or I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, look past it and say, oh, you know, like, I, I don't have time for this right now. You know, I'll come back around to it when I have time. And then just that time never happens or I forget that I was going to come back around to it. Just basically, I don't watch it. So just try to make something compact. Like, look at these edits here. These aren't the greatest edits in the world, but, you know, a couple seconds, couple seconds. There, there's a, there's a, a belief among some video editors that a cut should be as fast as a blink. You know, you blink, 
you blink again, you know, two, three, five, six seconds. Um, you, you just want to be constantly engaging the person so they're not sitting there, you know, for like a third or fourth blink and not having seen any sort of new information, anything that sort of excites them. And now what you can do to sort of continue that sort of excitement is do what I've been doing here, where you, you uh, let me find an example, where like right here, I'm stretching out this video, you know, and then bringing in another video on top. What I'm doing is I'm sort of compressing what this was probably, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds. Uh, it is 30 seconds, it looks like. But, you know, just something a bit long, and I'm sort of forcing it down, trying to compress it and compress minimal, 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 you know, as little as possible. And I, I think that's really how you should do this. You shouldn't just, hey, I'm done with the video. Let me just re-encode it and put it on YouTube. You know, like, that is just a whole lot of, I don't know, it, it's asking too much of people. Like, while you're playing it, that experience is fun. You're interacting with it. This other person, they have zero interaction with it. They're just staring at it, listening to it. Like, there, there's no thinking really going through their heads other than like, what the hell are you doing in the video? They're just along for the ride. So while you can turn the car left or right, they're stuck in the passenger seat and it's really boring and you're not even turning on the radio for them, you know? Like, so just, just try to make a sort of compact, curated experience. So now I've got here a um, second draft. My second draft, I reduced it down to, what is this, 21 minutes? Let's say 22 minutes. So 55 minutes to 22 minutes is good. It's not as great as I'd like it to be, but there will still be a little tweaking here and there. I'm going to now do a sort of third draft uh, where I'm just going to watch the whole thing again as if it were um, the final copy on YouTube. Just the, the Full piece, if there's something that's not flowing right, then I'll tweak it and maybe start over or just start from where I left off with that tweak. But now I'm just going to be watching it over and over again, sort of with the mindset that I'm seeing this with fresh eyes for the first time. What helps right now would be to maybe um, save it and come back tomorrow and have like a better perspective on what is fresh eyes or just go like AFK for 30 minutes or an hour. And really, I need to go AFK right now anyways. I've been sitting down for so long that I should, like, not sit here. But I'm going to do it anyways because um, I'm really stupid. So I'm pretty happy with what I got now. What I need to do still is at the end here, because some people won't see this, I'm going to put, you know, attackers have been eliminated or attackers fled or just something to signify that the defending team won. Um, because I'm defending, I might just say defenders win or defenders outlast. I don't know. I'll decide it when I'm doing it. Then I'll also need to do the, the support me on Patreon thing that I do at the end. Now I need to put the the whoops i didn't make i made that big on accident i need to put the the shack tack lower third in the beginning here and just because this recorded an early evening and you can see all these little little peaks here that's uh joey the parrot getting ready for bed making his nighttime squeaks and uh th this was an early evening just before sunset so um he hadn't crawled up to his little sleeper place yet so uh i'll, I'll do those now So I removed Joey Chirpin in the background some parts, but if you notice here, I left little markers all across the timeline. These are clips that Joey squeaked while um, I was speaking, so I couldn't just cut it out. So now I need to take it into audition and sort of look at the frequencies in like the heat map and just 
try to remove the ones that are Joey's um, voice, you'll be able to see that there's like a difference between the frequencies of a human voice and say the sound of anything else. Um, so it will be somewhat easy to spot what to take out. But the problem is if one of the frequencies is too close to either a like my voice or sort of the background tone of my voice between like the main frequencies that I speak at. So I'll be able to remove some of the, like the, the high pitchness, but I will not be able to remove the entire thing, which you'll see now. So I'm taking it into Premiere and you can see that right here, this is Joey right here. These waveforms that are, you know, just sort of out there while these are my voice. These are Joey. I'll give you a listen. This is just a platoon fucker looking out. This okay, so his is right here. This one's actually easy. I'm not speaking during it. I was just lazy, I guess. So I can just do this. Joey's gone. Gone from the mix. Removed. Looking out. Separate here. No, wait, no, it's right here, huh? Looking out in here. Looking out. This is just a platoon fucker. Looking out. All right, that's pretty good. It's probably the, the worst out. example to go with because it's the best result, really, that I'm going to get out of all of these, probably. So now that automatically replaces. I'll remove... Uh, uh, I'll go to the next marker. Okay, I need to do, I need to remove the marker just for my sake of mind, uh, peace of mind. Now the next one, open it back up. So you see, this one's gonna be harder. Joey um, squeaked while it looked like I was talking. It's right around here. Just put some, 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 just put some. Okay, so. Tech. Oops. Okay, so this is the next one with Joey. The problem is if I remove too much, then my own voice is gonna sound really weird. The way I'm doing this is actually rather sloppy too. There, there's much more elegant ways you can do it. But okay, let's see how trashed it sounds now. Just to put some rounds. Technical can hit them very poorly if you want me just to put some rounds. It doesn't sound too bad, but it's still, it sounds different. Technical can hit them very poorly if you want me just to put some rounds. Te okay, so it sounds really weird now. It's probably as good as I'm gonna get without compromising it too much. So it still sounds very weird. I think that's the best I'm going to get without compromising my own voice too much. And there's there's another one over here on this side, but this one's more distracting. Let me just put some rounds. Technical can hit them very poorly if you want me just to put some rounds technical can hit okay so look and hit the 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 look and hit now that's going to be uh that's going to have to be all i can do so clear marker okay finally did that and i'm pretty much done except there's just a few more things that i would want to do before you know signing off completely uh one of which is completely watch it over again but another one is um some of the points of me speaking in here are covered by um game audio of you know machine guns or people on the radio so i'm gonna go back into audition and do a side chain now so i'm gonna save 
Uh, edit sequence in Adobe Audition. Entire sequence. It's going to take the entire Premiere timeline now and put it into Audition. Um, same order of tracks and everything. Although um, there should only be two tracks since it's just doing audio, not video. All right. So now we are ready to go do our side chain. So first things first, we're going to go to the FX rack. We're going to add some uh, uh, dynamics processing. Bring it down to 20 sounds good. Make it spline curved so that it bends because who doesn't like bending? Um, settings, release time, we're going to do, um, I don't know, maybe 25 milliseconds attack time, two milliseconds. No one's ever going to perceive the difference, but whatever. Um, then we're going to go here. Sidechain create dynamics processing slot one. And... We need to find a part that is too loud for my liking. <laughs> like they're not moving. Command uh, not doing anything. Like they handy. must not be able to hear any cracks or. F okay, here's one. Acting. <laughs> like they're not moving. Command uh, thing uh, not doing anything. Like they must handy. not be able to hear any cracks or fucking all. I need to increase the dynamics processing a little bit. Let's bring it down to say there and we'll add another one another point okay let's give it a listen now <laughs> like they're not moving command oh, thing they're not doing anything there, like they must not be able to hear any cracks or okay what i'm going to do now is change the attack to instantaneous and the release to 10 milliseconds <laughs> like they're not moving, command oh, thing, they're not doing anything. There, like right they must not be able to hear any cracks or fucking all. Okay, no, I, I'm gonna actually increase the release to 100 milliseconds because I just don't like how I pause for a brief second and then you can hear 60 40 on the radio just get you know louder so quick, which just sounds really weird and unnatural. Like they're not moving, command oh, thing, they're not doing anything. There, like right they must not be able to hear any cracks or fucking all. Hmm. <laughs> like, they're not moving, command oh, thing, they're not doing anything, there, like, right they must not be able to hear. Okay, maybe if we lower it a bit more, even. Negative 35 sounds good. <laughs> like, they're not moving, command oh, thing, they're not doing there, anything, there, like, right they must not be able to hear any cracks or... F okay, that's getting close. But I'm just not quite liking it. Okay, this is way too much release, but um, we'll just roll with it because I'm only going to be using it a few times. Maybe it'll be fine with that much release. We'll see. So another part that looks maybe loud. I should have put markers down for these loud points. Um, all right, so that's done. I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to extract the whole mix down, entire session, mix down, send it to my desktop. So I'll always find it and I can always come around and delete it when I'm done. Now that I have it in Premiere, I'll just put it on a new uh, soundtrack and I'll mute the other two because I don't need them anymore because all of it's been mixed into this. And if I want to say, change something like I, I edit it a little and I want to have that reflected in this I can just go back to Premiere you know make it happen here also and then just replace uh, the footage it so at this point I think I'm almost done there's just two things that I really want to do one I want to watch it another time. And two, 
I want to do some zooming in on certain things because this was a, a quite a distant engagement, this entire mission. So times where I'm in the gun, zoomed in, you know, zooming a little bit more in editing is what I'm going to be doing. And then adding a little thing in the bottom right, like a little canned image that says, you know, I zoomed in in editing. It's a little magnifying glass with 2x. You'll see. Uh, you've probably maybe noticed it before. But it's also 1 a.m. Yeah, because it's 1 a.m., I'm going to actually save it now, watch it again tomorrow with fresh eyes, and then do um, markers while I'm watching it for me to come back then and do the zoom-ins and whatnot. So uh, for you, it'll just be a quick cut. For me, it's going to be like a couple hours. See ya. Okay, I'm back. Time to resume. So like I said, I'm going to rewatch the entire thing now and just see where I need to do sort of like the creature comforts of what I want to zoom in or whatever, since this is quite a, a, a distant engagement that we're having here in this video. You see what I'm doing right here? I'm zooming in. What I'm trying to do is have it zoomed in such that it doesn't really look like there was too much of a change in the perspective. If you can tell, this right here is the center of the screen. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling it down just so that your eyes sort of don't have to move after I've zoomed in. That it, it, like if you're looking here on this shot, once I zoom in a little bit, you're still looking there. You can just see it a little better. All right. I actually like it. It's pretty good. Um, I'm going to give it another look in a little bit, though, because something's happening here. Okay, so now I'm back, and I'm happy with what I see, so I'm just going to watch it one more time over just because uh, it's been a while uh, since I was last looking at it. And... Then after that, if I'm happy with it, I'll just export it and upload it for tomorrow. Okay, so I'm fairly satisfied with that. I think I'll probably watch it maybe one or two more times before I actually publish it. But I think that will be my final piece. So I'll go ahead and just render it out. Um, because everything's beige and shitty, I'm going to probably up the bitrate a little bit, but, um, it shouldn't honestly even matter because YouTube's a piece of crap and just re-encode it at a really bad quality. So that was me editing together this video. I don't know. Hopefully it helps someone. Uh, Black Dragon, I hope it helped you in some way. Uh, the two tools that I was using a lot the entire time, I probably should have mentioned it, were, um, this razor blade here and the normal mouse. You can select between them with C and V on your keyboard. All right, see ya.